Hi, I'm James. Um, I'm one of the uh, main people here at LiveG and today I'm actually going to be showcasing um, one of our projects that we've been working on for quite a while now. Um, it's called LiveG Project Prism uh, and it's basically to develop a open smartphone um, that is designed for general consumer use um, but is also meant to be friendly to developers as well. Um, I've got the smartphone right here. Um, as you can see it's all fully working. I can practically use it as a normal smartphone. Um, it's still very much in development, um, but you know, I can, I can open the apps on it, I can even browse the web. Um, here's an example of a test app that we've uh, been developing, um, which is, uses our own kind of user interface um, design language, um, which we've been working hard towards for quite a few months now. Um, Essentially, um, our ecosystem for apps is actually built out of progressive web apps, which are basically apps that run on the web. You may have come across quite a few of them before. Um, Twitter, for example, is a great app, uh, but also is a really good progressive web app. Um, and there's many other social media networks which use PWAs. Um, so our plan is to try and get those kind of apps to run on this device and build up a nice little ecosystem, which is open, um, much unlike uh, you know the main kind of competitors with smartphones, um, we're not the first to actually develop P PWAs um, as a kind of app ecosystem. Um, of course, whilst main uh, phone operating systems allow uh, for PWAs to be installed, there have been other operating systems um, which you know work with PWAs. For example, Firefox OS uh, by Mozilla which happened quite a few years back, um, which has since been discontinued, but also uh, KaiOS, which is based on Firefox OS, um, which essentially tries to get that in ecosystem into uh, low-end smartphones, um, which is designed for uh, consumers in developing countries. Um, so our kind of model is actually based on uh, Chromium, uh, more precisely Electron, um, which is a great system for us to integrate this custom kind of browser functionality needed for progressive web apps. Um, everything is open source, of course. Um, Electron, obviously, being what, uh, an open source project, and so is Chromium, um, but also our own code. Um, the phone is actually currently running uh, G Shell, which is basically a user in interface environment. Um, and that basically is what runs the apps um, and gives this beautiful UI. Um, and that will also provide things like the lock screen, uh, notification center, uh, your home screen, etc. So it's kind of the main core operating system kind of features. Um, and it's all actually running on Linux. Um, this is actually based off the Pine phone, which is very much a Linux device. Um, you can like, run many Linux operating systems on it. Um, and inherently that is all uh, very much open source, which we're pretty pleased about. Now this phone actually itself is, um, <laughs> it's actually very custom, um, being the first uh, prototype that we've made. Um, it, it's designed to be open, basically, um, not just in terms of the design, but also you can open it up physically, um, which current smartphones, not many can uh, do, unfortunately, these days. Um, and so it's really promoting the right to repair um, kind of movement. Um, having a phone that you can just access, not even with a screwdriver, I can actually just take the case off if I pull hard enough. Um, and I can get inside, I don't know, pop a new SIM in, put a new SD card in, and pop it all on, and I'll be good to go. Um, so that's a really nice feature. Um, I'm actually now going to show you some of the uh, other features of this phone that we've been developing, um, which are pretty cool. Uh, for example, well, as I mentioned, G-Shell, which is the main UI. Um, a bit about accessibility, seeing uh, how important it is with technology in general, um, and that's no exception for our project, uh, the Prism phone. Um, also the browser, Sphere, um, which is designed to be really well integrated with the whole operating system, um, and will let you browse the web just like on any other smartphone. Uh, and also a bit about uh, localization as well, because we find that also um, very important for selling it um, in multiple markets uh, and multiple languages um, and that's yeah a really important feature to inc uh, include indeed. Um, so right let's get started. Okay so this is a demonstration of the prism itself the main UI which is G-Shell um, 
and let's let's make a start. So first thing right off the bat I'm going to show you is actually the camera. Um, now there's a reason why I'm showing you that first. It's mainly to do with the, uh, the development of the OS thus far. Um, so yeah, the camera works as you can see. Um, we're still trying to fix the camera. There's a few kind of problems with it in that when you lock the phone it stops working which is why I'm showing you first um, but other than that I think that that works and it's a good demonstration of the fact that uh, it's working well with Electron which um, did take quite a few hours of our time to kind of debug and you know get working and get a nice pipeline going within the phone when you start it up um, so first thing I'm going to start with is we have a dark theme um, which is quite nice and I'm going to open up an app and show you what that looks like in dark theme. And it's quite nice. Um, and that applies system wide and it should work um, with, you know, other apps as well outside of our user interface design language, Adapt UI. Um, and it will work in the browser as well. So that's quite nice. Um, next, I'm going to probably show you the enforce passcode off. So that's basically... Uh, on authentication systems, so when I lock the phone, in fact, I'll use the power button to show you. Um, there you go, it's gone to sleep, uh, and that should, you know, save energy. But when we wake it up again, it'll ask for a passcode. So I'm going to enter one, two, three, four, which is the default at the moment. Um, but you'll be able to choose your own passcode when we've kind of implemented that. Um, I'll just turn it off now. Um, switch navigation, I'm going to show you later. That's part of the accessibility features. Um, Next, I'm going to show you the switcher. So the switcher is something that you've encountered on regular smartphones quite often. It allows you to show all your apps and choose between them. Um, and you can swipe them away and open them. And we can, you know, change options in apps. We can interact with them. And, well, that was the home screen you briefly saw there, which is still under, <laughs> under development, like most things. Um, you know, you get your list of apps and you just simply swipe them away. In fact, um, one thing that I have said earlier is, well, this thing all runs on Electron, so you can actually run it on a desktop as well for uh, development purposes. Now, I know that Electron is actually quite con controversial um, in terms of the fact that you're running a whole web browser, which is a whole, you know, a whole Google Chrome uh, running on here essentially um, and that can chew up ram and can and can make things you know less performant but actually it runs really well on this device um in fact i i dare say that it's actually more performant than the other desktop environments that i've used on this phone um launching apps is really quick bearing in mind that it's downloading the app from the internet right now um and when you try and do that on other desktop environments namely um kde uh, kde plasma on mobile and also Fosh, which is the GNOME shell for mobile. They both take about five seconds to launch apps um, from a cold start, which is honestly, I, I don't know if it's really usable, to be honest, um, compared to this, where you launch apps and they just appear in a matter of seconds. So that's quite nice. And it'll be even faster once we've got caching involved which we haven't at the stage, so it, you know, as it's downloading stuff from the internet, you'd expect it to be somewhat slow. Um, but yeah, the UI all fully works. Um, there's a few things to fix, of course, as always. Um, always, always goes wrong during the live demo. Um, and we're, we're implementing quite a few nice things, like swiping away things, so you have that in your mail app, for example, uh, to delete emails and that kind of thing. Um, you may have seen in the demos actually that there's a that there's an on-screen keyboard that uh, is actually quite a recent addition. Um, for some reason, kind of the UI is rendering rather strangely. <laughs> I think it may, may be a recent change to uh, Adapt UI, which is our um, framework on GitHub, um, which might be making that go wrong. But we can type in things like "Hello World." There will be uh, things like uh, autocorrect, um, you know, predictive text, texting um, added soon. And also, it'd be really nice to implement glide typing where you can essentially just, you know, glide your finger across the screen to write words without having to tap each key. Um, 
and that's something which uh, debuted uh, quite early on in Android. Um, next, I will show you Sphere, which is our web browser, and it's actually going to launch another app on our Switcher. Um, the Switcher is shown currently just to, to show you that apps are running. Um, but you, this would launch directly from the home screen on when we've implemented that. Um, as you can see, it's actually running quite a few apps at the same time, which is uh, quite nice. Um, I'll close all these for <laughs> just because why not? Organiza organizational purposes, I suppose. <clears throat> and as you can see, we're actually browsing the GitHub repository, which Gshell is based on. Um, hello to our lovely contributors, <laughs> which there's three of us and one is a bot. Um, and that works quite well. Um, you can look at the issues. I don't think there's many issues. Secure electron runtime. And yeah, it works just like a normal web browser, which is nice. And you can go back by pressing the back button. You can enter new addresses, for example. I need to implement selecting all. <laughs> there's still a lot to, to implement in this uh, OS, but um, it's coming along well from when we started, which is, I'd say, a few months ago. Um, We've got a working user interface, which is actually quite nice. And we can type stuff in, like... Now, Google um, thinks we're on a desktop, which is something we need to try and trick Google into thinking it's not on. <laughs> um, I'll... Yeah, which is why it's kind of a bit of a weird experience right now. Um, but, you know, you can, you can browse the GitHub and everything, which is nice. Um, Internet's going a bit slow right now, but that's to be, that's to be expected. Um, so that's really cool. Um, that's a general overview of Project Prism um, in terms of user interface. Next, we'll move on to the accessibility features, which um, are being integrated into the operating system to make the phone essentially usable by everyone. So that's going to be exciting. Okay, so moving on, uh, next we're going to be talking about accessibility. Now, accessibility is not only important in the physical world, um, where you install ramps uh, for people with limited um, movement ability, uh, but also in the digital world. Um, you may have come across features such as closed captioning, uh, screen readers, sticky keys, all of them are assistive technologies which uh, make it easier for uh, some people with certain needs to be able to use their devices uh, daily. And in some cases, it can also make their devices possible to use as well. Um, and I'm actually going uh, through one of our assistive technologies that's been implemented within uh, Project Prism. Um, and of course, we, from the start uh, of Project Prism, we've been you know, very careful in ensuring that uh, all our features of the phone are accessible um, and uh, you know, integrate really well with the assistive technologies that we'll develop uh, later on, um, such as you know, screen readers. But next, um, I'm actually going to be showing you an often overlooked assistive technology um, within general operating systems um, known as uh, switch navigation. Um, it, may, it may not have been one that you've heard. You may have heard uh, screen readers, but switch navigation is uh, very important. It essentially allows people with mi uh, limited motor skills to be able to use their devices um, and it enables them to use, for example, uh, the prism without touching the touch screen at all. Um, it essentially relies on having at least one button. Um, they're often quite big buttons so they're easy to press um, and pressing them at precise times to essentially have fine grain control over the phone and essentially actually allows you to do um, quite a lot of activities uh, on a phone as if you were touching it. Um, and of course this feature actually has been heavily inspired uh, by the YouTuber Christopher Hills. Um, he is a quadriplegic um, individual who actually makes use of switch control which is a feature on iOS which provides the same kind of feature as what I'm going to show you next. And his video is actually really um, inspiring and it actually shows you proper you know, daily use cases of switch control and how you know, it integrates and works really well. Um, so yeah, you should definitely check his uh, YouTube channel out, um, there's a link in the description. 
Anyway, let's uh, make a start with um, using switch navigation. Now those buttons that I was talking about with switch navigation uh, are known as switches, hence the name. Um, and whilst I don't have a switch on me, I'm actually going to be using my keyboard. Um, and you can use it to, you know, select items using your fingers, but you can also, you know, use it with any other body part that moves as well. So here I am at the main interface of G-Shell on the lock screen, and as I press space, it activates items. So um, as an example, I will toggle one of these switches by pressing space. And the nice thing is, is that when you press space, there's a little delay, so you can continue to press space to you know, toggle it again if you need to. Um, next, I will go into the switcher and I will enable point scan using the global menu. And that allows me to touch, essentially touch the screen, um, emulate a touch event, and it gives me these options such as swiping and pinching um, and just simple clicking. Um, and now I'm gonna go back into item scanning mode. Um, and as you can see, it works quite well with apps as well. Um, and, you know, I can interact with apps without having to touch them on the touch screen which is good. And you know, it's, it's automatically, you know, go it's scanning through the items one at a time and you'll be able to configure the speed. Here's a keyboard. Um, at the moment it is slightly slow, as you can see at typing. Um, there's gonna be some improvements along the way to increase typing speed, not only through, you know, the predictive text uh, feature, but also by grouping the buttons together and having kind of subgroups of buttons, if you know what I mean. Um, and that will speed up typing. Um, but for now, I'm going to hold down the tab key on my keyboard uh, to get to the key I need. Uh, kind of cheating, I know, but uh, yeah, uh, it's just for the demo, I suppose. Um, now I'm going to go back to the menu uh, and I'm going to use point scan to select the, uh, the menu. Um, and I'm going to go onto a different page as shown. And finally, I am going to hit the lift view button at the bottom to go home. And I'll just select the debug environment um, and go back to that. Now, as I go back into item scan, it should then start scanning again, as shown. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate the quick settings, which um, the, there's not many settings right now, but you can you know, do simple things like, uh, you know, changing the scanning speed uh, to however fast um, you need it to suit you. And I can then press done when I am done. I'm just going to adjust it slightly so that it scans at the speed that I need. And the better, the, the faster you go, it's harder to control, but, you know, the more efficient you'll be, uh, the faster it is. So there we go. As you can see quite close up, um, point scanning actually has a refinement system where it goes super fast um, initially to choose a general location on the screen and when you press space it goes into um, an exact uh, spot and it will do the same for the uh, Y axis as well. Now once you've uh, selected a point using point scan it brings up the menu. Um, currently only click and item scan have been implemented but the other options will allow you to you know, do swiping and things as well. Okay, so um, this is the code for G Shell, which is the, uh, the you know the environment I showed you earlier. Um, this is some of the code for it. Um, on the left, as you can see, there's a lot of code, um, and it's no wonder that um, you know when when we're trying to test things, we need some sort sort of simulator um, so that we can you know, rapidly kind of create iterations and test them and go back to our code and fix bugs. So. Uh, the simulator can be called by, uh, you know, typing the command dot slash g shell, and that starts up the simulator. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty much the real thing, um, except for it knows that it's running in the simulator. But apart from that, you know, everything else works. Now, of course, you know, a lot of hardware features, such as you know, phone calling, obviously won't work in the simulator because it's not the real thing. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll add things that allow you to fake that kind of stuff, so it can be tested. Um, within you know the calling app um, etc and as you can see you can you know launch apps just like so 
and it's pretty much the real thing. Um, so going over to localization, um, you can see that we've got uh, a JSON file which is growing <laughs> ever bigger. Um, and this one is actually for English United Kingdom, um, which is the primary language which G Shell is used with. Um, but you'll be able to change that. The idea is that um, we'll have different locale files for different languages um, and people will be able to translate the strings in G Shell. So for example, incorrect password try again uh, can be translated into other languages so that G Shell can be used and uh, Project Prism can be used in different languages and different locales. Um, so another demo I'd like to show you is um, the localization demo for Adapt UI. As you can say, see, it says hello world, um, of course, as with any demo, <clears throat> I can enter my name in here, oh, if I can spell it, <laughs> and as I press save, it says hello James, um, which is cool, and I can change language in the corner by pressing this button. Here's a list of languages I can choose from, um, and well, this list of languages has been selected uh, purely um, because of their different scripts, um, so we want to test that within the demo, and you'll see why. Um, so let's change it to Francais, um, and as you, can, as you can see, it says Bonjour le monde. Um, I can change, you know, my, my name, um, but I'll just keep it that. If I press on register, then you can see that it integrates my name into the text, which is customizable. Um, based based on the gr grammar rules of a language, um, and Arabic is an interesting one um, because when you choose Arabic, everything actually flips the other way um, in uh, well text mirroring. Basically, um, everything is written from uh, the right to the left, so we have to ca account for that in terms of our layout. Um, and as you can see, the button is all the way over here for Arabic, um, for Chinese, for Zhongguan. Um, it says Ni Hao, um, and I can choose my enter my name, likewise, hello James. You can also choose it for Russian as well, and that works as well. And we'll be able to expand for to multiple languages, English, French, Italian, uh, German, uh, Spanish, uh, which are kind of the core languages, as, as well as, you know, the Middle Eastern languages, uh, Asian languages, um, and other languages elsewhere in the world. Um, so that's pretty cool. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little localization demo. Um, and that's about it on that side. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed learning a bit more about the LiveG Prism and the project itself. Uh, before I go, I'm actually going to show you uh, this photo that you've seen uh, in the thumbnail of this video, I should hope. Um, you might, might, might actually think that it's a 3D uh, render, but it's actually a real photo of the prism itself. We got the lighting quite nicely on that shot and we're going to hopefully use it within our website as well. Um, if you uh, are interested, we've got a link uh, to our GitHub um, account, our organization, where you can see the various projects which are going on to develop uh, the G prism. Um, feel free to, I mean, if you've got an account, feel free to give a star. Um, and if you're really interested, you can contribute and help us out. Um, so yeah, I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching this video. Um, you might see a few uh, videos in the future when you develop more on the actual phone itself. Um, but until then, um, you know, take care, st stay safe, and yeah, see you until then. Bye.